Can everyone hear me? Yes. It's good to see everybody here this evening at Versus 12 as fine as you. I'd like to thank everyone for understanding that we have a different meeting at the senior center and to mention the air conditioning system still at Village Hall. At this time, I'd like to express my thanks to the fire department for conducting Sunday's 9-11 ceremony. It was terrific. As usual, there was a large turnout. It was nice to see so many people pay respects to our lost village residents as well. All who perished on that day 20 years ago. On a less somber note, I'd like to mention that we have a very talented village of Guernsey resident, Anastasia Pagonis, who not only represented the United States in the Tokyo Paralympics, but set a world record and received the gold medal in the 400 meter freestyle and also won a bronze medal in the 200 meter individual medley. We have reached out to Anastasia because we would like to formally congratulate her and we are trying to confirm which board meeting she will be able to attend so that we can recognize her. All right, congratulations to Anastasia for representing our country and our village. Uh, you are very dedicated and I know that you've done a very hard work and accomplished these uh, great achievements. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you Ralph Guito, the newly appointed assistant library director. Ralph, can you please stand? Here. Hello. Ralph began at the Garden City Library this past Monday and will be working along the library director, Marianne Hannigan. Uh, Ralph has 14 years of experience at the Syosset Library where he headed up the media department while also providing reference and reader services and hands-on computer and ebook training. He created and then implemented the Library of Things, co-created a pop culture con convention and successful spin-offs that book and film discussions, organized retro game nights, and many other successful programs and events. Hopefully you can do the same for Garden City. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the Village Residents, we welcome you and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. The first item for this evening is the oath of office for Police Officer Thomas Imperator, who began with the Police Department on August 15th. Commissioner Jackson, would you like to tell us a little bit about Police, police Officer Imperator? I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor. We are very happy to introduce Thomas Imperator as a new member of the Police Department. He attended and graduated from Adelphi University. As a former resident, he also volunteered with the Garden City Special Police from 2011 to 2014. <laughs> From two to, uh, he, uh, I'm sorry, as a former resident, he also volunteered with the Garden City Special Police from 2011 to 2014 until he became a police officer in, in New York City in July of 2014. He served, served seven years with the New York City Police Department prior to being offered the opportunity to join the Garden City Police Department. As a member of the NYPD, he was not only a patrol officer, but he also served as a neighborhood community officer. During his time in the city, he received Top of the Month Award, which is a big detail, uh, deal in New York City because of the large prisons, as well as numerous citations from local Senate, the Community Council, and the Community Board. And I like to say uh, I was uh, his boss when he was in the Special Police. Um, when Sandy hit, he was out there with all of us with the trees crashing into him, and he really worked hard that day. And for a volunteer to come out uh, by himself, nobody to back him up, going out there, Old trees off cars, rescuing people from uh, disabled autos. He sold me then, and he sold me now. So uh, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to bring him back here. I congratulate you on your appointment uh, to the Garden Police Department. I know you will be a great asset to the department. Trustee uh, Delaney, would you please come forward as the Trustee Police Commissioner for the Minister of the Open Office. Officer Perico, do you have any family members? Oh, yes. Hi, just state your name. I, Thomas Imperator, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New York, and the Constitution of the State of New York, and the laws and ordinances of the village of Garden City. And the laws and ordinances of the village of Garden City. And I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of a police officer with the Garden City Police Department. The duties of a police officer with the Garden City Police Department.
to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. By the power vested in me as police commissioner of the Village of Garden City, I declare you will be appointed. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I have uh, one item on the agenda, six for uh, grant contracts. This is for uh, the last year's uh, traffic grants and this year's traffic grants that we're currently in. We just approved for next year. Uh, what happened was uh, NAS, I mean, New York State went totally automated with the traffic grants and uh, they're, since they're being conducted electronically, they were uh, inadvertently not submitted for, for, for approval. Uh, they're the same grants that we approve every year. Uh, last year's was $17,000. Because of COVID, we did not do the seatbelt <laughs> mobilization. So uh, we, uh, I believe we received the money already for the PTS enforcement. Uh, this year, we're actually currently doing it now. Uh, it's, it's to September 30th. And that's for 18.5. We got a raise this year of uh, one point, uh, one and a half, $1,500. Uh, and we are actually using most of that money right now for the uh, commencement at the beginning of school. It's been very effective. So we're just asking for approval. That's all I have on the agenda. Thank you very much. Uh, Chief Moody, you're next. Uh, I have nothing on the agenda, Mayor. I just want to thank uh, the Mayor, the Board, and the residents for attending the 9 11 ceremony. Uh, we had a very nice show. I have a microphone. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I just want to thank everyone again. Uh, make sure that day's never forgotten. And also, October 3rd uh, is going to be our annual fire prevention day. So we ask all residents that are available that day to come on down and learn about some fire safety. You know, it's a good event for the kids and for the adults as well. That's all I have, Mayor. Thanks very much. It's now it's going to be 1230 to 330. Sunday the 3rd. Uh, Chief Moody, the ceremony was beautiful. Thank you very much. Village Treasurer, I mean you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. On tonight's agenda, um, the first item is the uh, approval from the board to appropriate funding from the termination reserves for an employee who left village service from the Public Works Department uh, in the amount of $8,876.10. Uh, item number two, uh, Mr. Swazi will discuss um, item A uh, later on. And item B is a request to transfer some funding, $2,147.26, uh, uh, to debt tax discounts from contingency. Uh, this is related to uh, uh, the, the discounts that are given to taxpayers when they pay their full year taxes in uh, the first half rather than uh, pay first half in June and second half in December, they choose to pay the full half in, in the, the entire 
uh, tax due in June for a discount. Uh, so we had more uh, payments, fully our payments this year than anticipated. Is that it? That's all. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Superintendent, is that it? Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Board of Trustees, everyone. Um, I have one item on the agenda tonight. It's um, for the board's authorization to uh, request or ratify the approval of one of my building inspectors to attend uh, Western Southern Tier Building uh, Officials Education Conference. Every year, we, what, the inspectors have to maintain 24 credits, and this is just to authorize them, one, to go um, to Celeron, New York, to, to attend um, the conference for his credits. The uh, total cost is 593. It's going to come out of the operating uh, budget of the travel and train. And that's it, ma'am. Any questions? You will have to answer. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Recreation Commissioner Paul Wright. Nice to see you. Thank you, ma'am. Nice to be seen. Uh, we have nothing on the agenda this evening, but I certainly will be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Here to be. Good evening, Mayor, members of the board, and the members of the public. Uh, as is usual, I have no separate and independent item on the agenda, although I work with the department heads on virtually all of the agenda items. Thank you. And Ralph Slot. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, um, trustees and members of the public. Uh, this evening, uh, uh, Treasurer Wu mentioned I would cover item two. This is to cover expenses for uh, legal fees, for legal services rendered by Berkman, Henry Peterson, Petty, and Pendle. Um, we have a, an outstanding bill of about $8,400 of change. We only have about 6200 in the account, so the $12,500 is to cover approximately 2200 in change to cover the uh, outstanding invoice, less invoice, and approximately $10,000 is uh, being placed in the account, uh, anticipating there might be some further need for legal services. Um, I've noticed set on public works. This is to send, uh, board, this is board organizations requested to send Deputy Superintendent of Public Works, Don Sanko, and Village Engineer Craig Gandini to the full public works training school scheduled for October for the purpose of continuing education credits related to water operator, professional engineering. Um, the cost is $2,800. Item number eight. Um, engineering and inspection services for areas, highway and utility projects, and other engineering tasks. Earlier this year, the engineering department put out an RFP for engineering services to nine engineering firms. Four proposals were received, among them the one for H2M. The services requested then were for an engineering aid and for a construction inspector, and those two positions were awarded to H2M as they had the lowest hourly rate. Recently, the engineering department, along with the building superintendent, Giuseppe Giannello, sat down with each to discuss the capital projects and utilization of the engineering services. That meeting helped us identify additional engineering services that we could uh, resource against these projects. Since H2M had been awarded the first two positions, I asked them for an amendment to the initial proposal, which is what appears in the agenda this evening. However, I then decided to reach out to additional engineering firms, as I had done the first time around, and the results of that request produced a nice variety of rates, such that I wish to amend this resolution as follows. For the senior project architect and engineer slash professional engineer title, I would like to award this to L.K. McLean Associates, D.C., at a rate of $175 an hour. All the other firms that responded came in with a rate of $185 per hour. Item number two, a project architect slash engineer. For the project architect slash engineer title, I would like to award this to the Berker and Bartolucci, reference using the D&D architects and engineers, at a rate of $110 per hour. Ralph, well, where are you referencing? Yeah, we don't have that here, Ralph. No, it's the agenda you have has each term on. I'm, I'm actually doing, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to amend it as I'm seeing. Oh, okay. Got it, thank you. Um, so, I would like to award to the the architects and engineers at a rate of 110 per hour. All other firms responding came in with rates as high as 170 per hour to a low of 120 per hour. For the survey partner slash field survey, I would like to award this to d and as well at a rate of 85 dollars per hour. All other firms came in with rates from a high of 120 per hour to a low of 95 per hour. So this allows us to spread our dollars a lot further when we sign projects in. 
In addition to this change, I would like the board to consider a suspension of the rules to fund these consulting services for the open positions in the engineering department and DPW. I've asked Treasurer Ari Wu to identify the unused funds that are available for this use. At this time, I would like to ask the board to allow a transfer of funds from the appropriate regular salary lines for the existing open positions for a total of $100,000 to the engineering contractual services line. By approving these rates and funding this work through this transfer, the work will proceed on a project-by-project -project basis in priority order, and POs, purchase orders, will be issued against each project to the individual firms within the lot of budget of $100,000. So basically, if you authorize this funding and approve these rates, I was, we'll be sitting down as a team, which goes from two people now to seven, and we will uh, get any proposals based on the need of each project. And so we'll get a project proposal for 30 hours, and that'll be $4,250, and we'll approve that. Uh, that'll be not to exceed, and then we'll deduct that from $100,000 on to the next project until we exhaust it. And we might come back down the road uh, later in the winter for more. Um, I have supporting paperwork for all of this for the village clerk, and I also uh, want to point out that this, all these uh, relationships, contracts will be subject to uh, acceptance of the terms and conditions um, as required by the village attorney. Item number nine. Ralph, before you go to nine, can I ask you a question about this? Yes, sir. Where, where, where do we stand, where does the village stand on hiring um, engineers in-house? So about... Uh, or are we going to hold off until we have a DPW? I was holding off until we hired a DPW director, uh, but then I, I decided, I asked HR to give me uh, the list of competitively uh, executed exams from civil service. One engineer responded. We brought that person in. Uh, they met uh, everyone. We were very happy with it, but we offered the job. She turned it down uh, because of, uh, it was just a long time for a junior country to interviews. Um, recently, I asked HR to uh, provide us with any other list, there's a new list, there's one person on it, that person's interviews will be set for next week. I also have asked for an engineer uh, trainee, uh, for the position we have for inspecting, that we're interviewing as well, but they haven't scheduled yet. But we are trying to hire, uh, and there's not very much out there, but we can turn to uh, you know, the marketplace if the list is gone, don't have enough candidates, and we may do that. In the meantime, this allows us to throttle up the work, and we can always adjust it when we put bodies on. Okay, my, my question then is, without going into great detail, did the candidate turn it down because of the salary or for other reasons? Other reasons. Okay, okay thank other you. Reasons. Thank you. Ralph, I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, first of all, I'm glad you went out to bid and uh, on the price made sense. I mean, we do have to bid, we actually saw proposals. It's, so it's like an RFP process. Right, okay. But you had other proposals? Yes. Okay. Did you check references on the ones you're selecting? The companies I, I sent to are all well-known established firms I've worked with before. So, I, I mean, a reference check would bring back dozens of qualifying references. They're all, they're all known. Okay, companies. but you, you've worked with them and you're confident that they could deliver? I work with them both in my old John and Mike Colvin here in, in Garden City, and they're, like I said, they're, they're well-established, long-arm firms with great credentials. Okay, thank you. Number nine, purchase of equipment. Yard dump truck and store load tandem action garbage truck. Board, board, board authorization is requested to purchase the following equipment for a total cost of $433,494.80. The first trunk, truck is a dump truck that was originally estimated to be costing $830,000, but now has an actual Price of 245, 406, and 10 cents. The second truck is store load tandem axle garbage truck, originally estimated at $185,000, but now has an actual cost of 188, 088, and 70 cents. These items are being purchased off of the competitively bid New York State contract. It should be noted that the DPW equipment budget for 2021-22 was for five vehicles, budgeted at $900,000. Due to savings when purchasing the first three vehicles. There are available funds to meet these higher costs and remain within the budget. The increasing cost is due to the rising cost of steel products. Um, then we have uh, the award, under award of bids, we have item number 10, brick wall reconstruction, Nassau Boulevard Railroad parking lot, 2021. Uh, a few um, meetings ago, this project was deferred, three or four meetings ago, the board deferred this project. So we'd like to reject the bids to return the money to the people who bid on it. 
Um, so we ask for support of that, and also authorization to allow us to, to uh, perform the repairs of the walls on an as needed basis. Can I ask a question here? Yes. Justin. So it was determined that it's not in the village's best interest. Who determined that? The board uh, at the time of the meeting. I, think I, was, I was at the meeting that it was deferred, and that's that's fine. But it was to see if the bids could go out again. The wall is falling down. The wall has water seepage. It has damage. Um, can we patch a wall in that condition? I would. I would so, wait, so I hear no from the, from our buildings person, building superintendent. Right. So the second phrase, board authorization is requested to allow for any repairs on the wall as needed, is not able to be done. I, 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 so let me just explain that. We, when we deferred this, um, we were well beyond the 45 days when a bid is active. So I think legally we probably can't use the bids anymore. Can um, we rebid it? We can rebid it. And so I thought that was the purpose of deferral. At this time, I don't anticipate, although we're asking for an allowance for repairs, the wall is badly damaged due to water infiltration from the top. It, it, was, it was built in a different uh, time, um, the new wall would have been uh, more robust and it would have lasted much longer at this time. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put substantial lines into it. There might be some things we could just uh, try to, I mean, it looked nice with landscaping a bit, but I wouldn't put money into the walls. So you wouldn't put money into the walls, but the wall is significantly damaged. So if the bids were rejected because the board did not want to spend the money at that time, and I was at that meeting, can it can the wall be looked at again in a redesign and bid out again so that it doesn't look like it's falling out? This piece is a brick in Nassau Boulevard Road. I would, right. the, the condition of the wall is probably better explained by uh, Mrs. Janella um, as a, someone who is a, um, a trained architect and engineer. But, um, we're, we're talking about one wall here, correct? I mean, there's, there's, not, wall. there's two. two walls. Yeah, because I've seen it, and there have been some bricks that are off it. I mean, or has it deteriorated in the last three weeks? It's going to keep deteriorating. Well, one, okay. Gone. But to the point to repair the whole thing, I mean, to replace the whole thing and not repair it? It calls for replacement. You really think so? Just taking a look at that wall with a few bricks. Can you describe the condition of the wall exactly? Well, the condition of the wall, I mean, the whole wall is deteriorating. Um, a when lot say, of you say water, water can you infiltration. You what deterioration is? Are you missing water joints? Are the bricks falling? Do you have right. displacement of the walls? That's what deterioration is to me. Yes, yes. There, there are many locations where the brick is falling off and is on the sidewalk and, and in the areas of where the wall, proximity of the wall. The coping stone is, is coming off. The uh, planters on, on top, the little pots are, are deteriorating and cracked and ready to fall off. Um, it, a lot of the the um, the joints itself are, you know, they're repointing. It's, it's all opened up and it's it's taking in a lot of water, which in time is just going to keep spalling out and spalling out until this wall just completely collapses. The way the wall is designed is, is just come up with a two-faced brick and, and that's it. And with the new construction of the wall, you'll have appropriate weep holes and, and so forth to to uh, to last more than what is the thickness of the wall? Uh, I don't recall at the moment, but I believe it's 18 inches. I would say thick, possibly. Right. So it's not a it's not a, what we call a two wide wall. Two right. It's a three wide wall, right? 18 inches equals three wide of brick. Correct. So it should be more stable. Um, have you seen the conditions of the uh, of the wall? I have, but I haven't been in the last few weeks. But I would like to take another look uh, just to see if we could. I, I would yeah. like to, to go and see. Yeah, yeah, but it's very simple to go there. It's my point out. is this: if it's so deteriorated, right? There's an urgency to repair it or replace it, right? Before the winter sets in, because when the winter sets in, you can't do any work. So it's then just going to possibly collapse if that's what you're saying. Well, that's what it's leading to. Right. So again, there's an urgency here to get the work done as quickly as possible. Maybe you can do some remedial work to stabilize the wall. Uh, you know, again, we need a report of some kind to tell us it's exactly what's happening. Can I, can I ask a question? Is this wall the same as I, this, this company three that has a brick parking lot and has a wall and there's no pots there? It looks very nice. It was worked on a few years ago. Is this wall the same as that? It's, it's a similar style as this wall. The wall that I saw, just to interrupt you for a second, Colleen, is the one closest to the 
Pacific Railroad track as well as Nassau Boulevard. On both ends of the right. parking Yeah, no, but the ones on the other side on that street, I didn't see any indication of any deterioration. It's, it's, it's the wall on Nassau Boulevard. There's okay. two walls. There's two entry There walls. are two walls, yes. but there was one that was closer to the tracks that I thought, you know, definitely would need repair and maybe more than that. Right. The second one, I didn't quite see as much of it. The walls are so far gone, it's not worth repairing. I mean, we had a village engineer go there and examine it and take notes and details and, and produce these plans so we can go out to bid with it. So it's been it's been looked at. Um, it's not worth spending money to fix a wall that's going to come down in, in a year. Right. So it sounds like to me you're going to rebid this whole project. Right? Uh, yes, that's the plan. Right. But I would like to take Just a look. Just as quickly as possible. Yeah. I would like to take a look with you okay. at some point. So we'll, we'll play something on October 10th and then if you don't want to do it. Ralph, can we get it taken a look at by the time of the October 7th agenda so we can do something? I think it's been looked at quite thoroughly, but I think... No, no but I mean, can we put something... Will we be in a position on October 7th to vote on putting a bid out. Yes, I believe we can. We're, just, we're going to modify the existing bid that was put out and it should be no problem. We okay. Can, we can look at it. So it's ten staying on the agenda? Temporarily removed till October, deferred till October? Well, if you have the plans already made, that is the it's a rebidding process, right? right? You can rebid this budget tomorrow. I would defer to the Do we have to rebid if the contract is still into the balance? There was a conversation with us prior to when this board came on about the top, what to do, whether it's bluestone or not. So I don't know where you landed with that decision. So that might be good. Is, is there a coping detail? There's a coping detail and it is bluestone. Okay, fine. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. And then there's the flashing. Correct. The what the Yes. Yeah. I, I think you're ready to rebuild it. Yeah, you know, there are a number of options, and one of them is for you to simply authorize this evening the village staff to rebuild the project. Is uh, is that agenda item then uh, to authorize rejection of the bids formally that were tendered and to direct staff to rebid the project? Exactly. Very good, sir. Then I'll, uh, for the purposes of the consent agenda, I will assume that that is the agenda item. And, and I have one last item. Um, Back in 2020-21, there was a administrative capital project known as Rehab of Monuments. This involved other monuments over at uh, Osborne, the World II Monument, through the Fire Park Monument, and involved the gazebo by Village Hall, the, uh, west of the Fire Department. And um, there's a couple small items over by uh, the Rainbow Monument I'd like to take care of. So I'd like to ask the board if you please modify the description of the project because the purchasing department, I want to put some flagpoles by the fire for mine, the purchasing department noted that there are no flagpoles mentioned. So it's nice that they uh, do that type of uh, extensive investigation before we spend money. So I'd like to modify the description to put the word approximately in front of all of these dollar amounts. The description has a be today says $7,500 to repair and enhance World War II monument at Osborne. $12,500 for two additional stone benches, new lighting and trees at Fire Park Monument, $20,000 to replace brick walkway to gazebo, replace gate and fence, and update and replace plantings along walkway. I'd like to change to add the word approximately in front of all the dollars. I'd like to add uh, the word um, flagpoles. Where is this, I'm sorry. The Fire Park Monument is, is on Surrey. No, no, where is this? I don't see this on it's, there. It's not, because it, it's, it's something that came up from purchasing today, so it's just, it's just an update description to flagpole. I know, but we got Why don't we just put on the next one? Is there something? We, we can put it on the next agenda, but I just thought it was something, since it's only a couple of words, that we might be through now, so we can, like, we can skip this one. We don't know what you're talking about, I mean, right. that's the problem. Okay. Put it on the next agenda. All right. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, yeah, Ralph. Ralph sent out a, a, on, with regard to an uh, outstanding invoice that we have from PCAT, Ralph sent out an a, a, a email today explaining what was going on. I, I'm wondering if there's some way we could expedite Ralph moving forward, getting an expert to review that uh, invoice um, so that we can start the payment process or whatever we have to pay or whether we don't have to pay. Is there any way that we can get that moving more quickly than at our next meeting on October 7th. Uh, John, uh, we've reached out to several consultants. 
Yes. Legal consultants and engineering consultants that will review the information from PCAP. I, I, no, I understand that, Mayor. But the consultants, is there any way we can get them on board to look at it sooner than the October 7th meeting? I, I realize we need consultants on it. Uh, We're trying to do that. Okay. Yeah, I've been in contact with Ralph Strauss and this Okay, so we'll, okay. All right, as long as we're moving forward. Thank you. Okay, do we have any trustees have any comments or questions on any item that's just been discussed? Any more comments or questions? Okay, let's go to, are there any citizen comments on any other items? Please state your name and address, please. So, people in the audience. Is that agenda items only? Yes. Yeah. Agenda items only. Anyone have any comments on Zoom, please? On the agenda items only? Next one of business is the approval of the minutes of the previous Board of Trustees meetings. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the August 19, 2021 regular board meeting? I'll make a motion. Do you have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting of August 24, 2021? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting of September 1, 2021? I'll make a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We now move on to the consent calendar. Is there anyone who likes to move around from the consent calendar for no. discussion? Mayor, before the uh, consent calendar is moved, I'd just like to clarify that item eight will now include the three additional, or rather the two additional firms at the three additional rates for the titles mentioned by Mr. Swazi, and additionally that uh, there's, I believe, a transfer of funds that is involved as well. Ms. Wu tells me that that will entail a transfer of $100,000 uh, from engineering uh, salary over to engineering contractual services, as well as some, uh, Ms. Wu says, not the DPW salaries. Okay, and finally, that item 10 is an authorization to reject bids, but then to immediately rebid. With those amendments to the agenda, uh, I believe it would be right for a motion to uh, move the consent calendar. Okay. We have a motion? I'll make it. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Motion passes. We'll go to the formal agenda now. Uh, we're talking about the appointment of. 3 point Western Water Authority of Nassau County Board Member David Osborne, 16th Finch Avenue, for a term to expire April 3rd, 2023. Second item is site plan approval. Final site plan approval for five coffee roasters, 147 7th Street. Board authorization is requested to approve the application for final site plan approval for additional parking at 4-5 four, at four coffee roasters, 147 7th Street. This project was recommended for approval by the Planning Commission on August 4th, 2021, and the Architectural Design Review Board on July 27th, 2021. And three, acceptance of the resignation letter from Courtney Ruck Rosenblatt for the Village Auditor position, effective September 16, 2021. And four, appointment of Adam Whitby to the non-unionized position of Village Auditor, effective September 10th, 2021, with no change in compensation or other terms and conditions of employment that have previously existed for him as a unionized senior accountant position under the CSEA Supervised Collective Bargaining Agreement, authorizing and ratifying the leave of absence from this position of senior accountant effective September 10, 2021, or upon civil service approval for the balance of the official year ending April 4, 2022, requesting ratification for that.
You have a motion? I, I have a quick question. Sure. On, the on the additional parking uh, for the, uh, what is it, the five, coffee five coffee roasters, does that affect any handicap parking? Or we good there? We're good. We're good. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, one more thing before we go to the uh, formal agenda. I just want to point out uh, with regard to um, uh, Mrs. Rosenblatt that she is resigning as a, uh, the auditor, but uh, the reason for that being that we want her to spend her full time on uh, human resources, and, and uh, that, that's the area where um, this board and prior boards feel um, that time should be spent. Um, and so there's no confusion as to why uh, she's resigning her position to uh, spend more full time uh, in the human resources area. Thank you for the clarification. So do I have a motion to approve? Motion. I'll second it. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Can I ask you one question on the coffee shop? Uh, is it's is it more like a restaurant than a coffee shop? It's, it's actually a coffee. It's a five of coffee. Can you hear me too? Yeah. I think you can. I've actually never been in one, but I've heard it's actually a good coffee. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's a coffee shop, and they're going to have some inside seating. Uh, that's the relief on the parking area, uh, but there's definitely not a good parking there for that. Um, so they're going to have small uh, items, uh, maybe pastries or whatever it is there, but it's mostly a coffee shop. Yeah, I'm just surprised at the 42 parking spots, you know, I think it would be more like a restaurant. Or right, the existing building's not going to change, it's going to be the same. No, no, they I just understand that, but the, the, the existing tenant didn't need as many parking spots, correct? I think that's what I'm reading here. Uh, that, is, that is correct. It, it's, it's, all, it's, it, it's subject to the seating, so that's really why they're asking for the relief. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, you now we'll request uh, citizen comments and monitoring items. Okay, can I just ask a question before we start? Um, I don't know if this is right. We talked about the traffic calming report and that the Commissioner Jackson was refining his comments and it was now going to move to Nassau County. Is, am I correct in that? Right. I'm happy to stand here. So, so the um, it's July meeting. The board had a presentation by Craig Manning, Mr. Feliciano, the presentation of the Cathedral Avenue uh, uh, road diet. I think it was received very well by the board, but the board did ask Mr. Jackson to. Uh, as the person who knows traffic the best in this community to opine on the report. He did read it thoroughly. He expressed comments or which were communicated to Craig Manning. Uh, they ended up doing two drafts to make sure they were uh, verbatim. Uh, and I talked to Christian Jackson this morning and he is uh, satisfied. He can nod his head, I guess, in agreement. But he's satisfied with the he's satisfied with the presentation of his comments in the final draft. So since the Bills of Garden City is the client to Craig Manning, he can very well pass it to Nassau County without at least uh, approval by this board. I don't know if it has to be a formal vote or just a, 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 an agreement, but uh, I can pass it along uh, immediately for consideration by Nassau County. I'm sure they'll have some comments, uh, but then we can deal with those in a minute. So if the board, uh, I sent it to the board, I received it Friday. If I could send it to I'm sorry, I sent it today. But it's the same study with the addition of Commissioner Jackson's comments. So um, I, I think you'd be safe in okaying it tonight. But if you want to take it two days and then give me an email, okay, I'll, I'll send it later in the week. Next week. I have a question for Commissioner Jackson. I mean, we've had some discussions you and I about the potential of traffic being diverted to other areas of the current city after we've done the, the, you know, the road common design. And I'm just really concerned that if we do something, will it affect other parts of Garden City? And then what do we do with the other studies? Thank you, Mary. Uh, that's always, whenever you do a change, uh, even Frank will say, 
uh, that there's always a possibility of other changes. Um, you know, I went over this study real hard. Uh, I spoke with his engineers at length. Um, I also went through the uh, FHWA, the Federal Highway uh, so, uh, Association, to go over a lot of their road diet plans. Um, I, I think I, I believe it's a good plan. It, 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 I believe it works. I just, uh, as everything goes, you don't know what could happen. So uh, I, my feeling when you do a report, you should list all the possibilities that could happen. Uh, but uh, that center lane, turning lane, uh, that um, that will alleviate some of the issues. Uh, I believe that they, with my uh, input, they have put in all the possible things that could happen. But they, I, I think they show in their report that the overall safety is maximized. So I, I believe the overall safety, so they have listed some of the possible disadvantages or things that could happen, but it also seemed to me, uh, to me like, uh, listed that uh, what could happen should, should be a, a, a advantage or, or a plus for us. And um, I really looked at it hard. I looked at all the addendums as they, as they know, because I didn't change a couple. Um, but uh, I think it's a very good comprehensive report. Um, I know we looked at uh, we talked about three or four other streets. Uh, this one has the least amount of mileage. I mean, at least amount of cars on it, so I think it's a good start. Um, I do recommend, if, you, if we do look at it, that we probably would start with just a line painting, uh, just in case, if, it, you know, if there is an issue, we can change it right away. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good report. And, uh, so, would you recommend doing this, you know, implementing the design modifications to Cathedral Avenue first? before we do other parts of Garden City? I think it would be a, a, a good thing to do, a good choice, because you want to see what happens if it will divert traffic. Uh, they, they feel that that diversion will be minimized because of the center lane. Um, so, but you would like to see it. I mean, you always have to contend with Waze and Google. Uh, that's, uh, and you don't know how they're going to react to this. Um, so that's always my concern. Um, I did, don't just be flying in before. I, I, I put studies, I put cop offices in each area of town, and that, they, it's amazing how fast that operates. Uh, so uh, they know where every one of my cars are. I mean, I, I, if I want to know where my cars are, I just go in ways, I know where my guys are. So, um, so uh, it's, it's, uh, it's quite an interesting uh, dilemma, and they put that in their report on my request. So, um, but I think it's a good start. I think it's uh, something that, you, uh, that we can look at. You know, I, I, I'll be remiss if I didn't say if we do the other surveys before this, it may change a little bit. The dynamics may change. So you, you would like to have that dynamics covered uh, when you do the survey. So when they do the survey, they can see if there is any change in dynamics. So it's just my opinion. I've been around a long time. Um, and, uh, I value your opinion. Yes. And I, but well, again, I, I thought they did a good job. I like the fact that they reached out to me. They spoke to me personally, uh, two engineers. Um, and the fact that they mentioned uh, some of the things I put in there, uh, based on my knowledge, uh, you know, kind of impressed me because, uh, you know, a lot of times engineers and police don't always see the same thing, but they seem to have looked at, uh, you know, at least looked at what I asked them. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Just another question to that point. Do we have a timeline as far as when we think this would be implemented for road diet? Well, I think the one advantage we do have, uh, the county already is aware of this, and they are sort of an initial study uh, a year or so ago before COVID. Uh, so I think hopefully they will be able to um, just rejoin this effort. I, I, I believe they worked with Frank. Uh, I, know, I know there's a lot of issues with the uh, kind of their manpower issues, but um, the way it's laid out and it's a painting issue, it should be faster than most other, it's not like a traffic light when you wait two years. Um, so, um, but I think what this has laid out is the fastest and best option. I mean, we have to rely on the county approving it and kind of how much they'll study it. Hopefully they've already been looking at it since uh, Frank's been reaching out to them. So hopefully, uh, it's like me, when people reach out to me about something, I, I already start looking at it. Maybe I might be doing numbers or anything else. So hopefully when somebody says, okay, we're good, I already have a head start. And I believe they should have a head start because I know it will work well. So I'm hoping a head start helps them. Can I make a comment there? 
I just want to say to the Commissioner's last point, Creek Manning and Nassau County worked together very early on, which was because they had to make adjustments because of the COVID traffic flows. They had to come up with an algorithm to adjust for the real world we know exists before COVID and hopefully after COVID. The other thing is, the question you just asked the mayor, uh, mayor you asked Commissioner Jackson about the diversions to the side streets. Uh, the Commissioner and I talked about that as well, and I also called Mr. Plisciato, told him of concern. One of the reasons that the people having is such a great candidate for road diet is because the volume is around 11,000 vehicles a day. Uh, diversion usually occurs at 20,000 off the 20,000 uh, volume mark, so it should not be uh, a factor. And also, because they looked into the years ahead, they, they kind of figure those things in their calculations. I can't speak to you like Mr. Plisciato could, and he can't be on this call, but I, I feel confident that, uh, as the Commissioner said, that this is a, a good starting point. It's also a model for what we might be able to do on other county and south roads. Thank you. Continue again. Are there any citizen comments on agenda items? On agenda items? Yes. Um, yes. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Robert Sorrenti. I live in uh, Alexander House. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. On 7th Street. Uh, I know you just ratified uh, some additional parking in the back. Uh, this, this afternoon I went to the, 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 the hall and I asked for if I could get a permit to park back there because of, you know, we live behind there that you just took over another 30 spots and maybe perhaps as at the first. And I was told that we are not entitled to permits because we're from the Alexander House. Well, they said only Jerry, you have, you have, just a question, Jerry, you have parking within, you know, with uh, your apartment? We do have limited parking. We, there are uh, four unit owners uh, in, in the building, and we only have eight spots. So, and you know, we all know today, each family has one or two cars uh, per family, or kids now. The building's been changed within the last five years. So, uh, well, just a, I understand your question. Just one other question is, uh, do you personally have one car already situated within um, what you're allotted from the building? Yes, but it's so first. So you're looking for a second spot? Well, it's first come, first serve. So like I said, there's 14 units, and it's only eight spots. Oh, so there's eight spots. You're afforded a spot if it's available. Right. I see. So that's why I'm asking if we can have the privilege uh, to walk back there as well as the so we, we can look into that. So you're looking to get six more spots. How many units are there? Okay. Well, 14. 14. And uh, like I said, yeah, we can we can look into that. This is Alexander Hutchinson. Yes, the size of our absolutely. We'll look into it right away. Thank you very much. Stephen Huntington Road. Uh, I was very pleased to see Mr. Mayor that in today's Garden City patch, there was an announcement that the Garden City Police had issued something like close to 400 tickets for speeding and other moving traffic violations. They said the focus was on schools and the routes that the children take to get to school. And I was thinking that perhaps that emphasis was because of something you said in this room in the middle of July at that meeting. I don't know if you remember saying it, but you turned to the commission and you emphasized the importance of doing something. Uh, so I thank you for that. And my only concern is that this will be the end. I hope this is not like college basketball one and done. I hope you will continue to pressure the police to do what they're doing. Thank you for it. Mr. Stiller, I want to say something. Thank you for your comments. But I've been speaking to Commissioner Jackson almost every week about making sure we have surveillance. Uh, and Commissioner, thank you for the efforts. Any other comments, please, from the audience? Please come up. Hey, 
know most of you. For those of you who do not know me, uh, my name is Maria Murray. And um, I'm sure by now you've all read the letter that I wrote to the Garden City News. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, is that better? Yeah, All right. Um, I want to preface this by saying, because it's come up in comments, it's been insinuated, it's been outright said to me, this is not a party versus party issue, in my opinion, here in town. This is about doing what's right. I will also put it out there for the sake of transparency that I am the mother of a Marine. It shouldn't matter but I know to some people it does. On Friday, after our country went through the bombing at the Kabul airport, I noticed in the afternoon that the library flag was not at half staff. So I went about my errands, I did you know, what I had to do, intending to call the village and then realizing it was after hours. I just let it go. It bothered me all weekend, it bothered me all weekend as I passed flag after flag, fully up. And Monday afternoon I called Village Hall around 12 o'clock, left a message. Mr. Swazi returned my call within a half an hour, which I was extremely impressed. Um, Mr. Swazi, do you remember that call? Yes, I do. Okay. So is it appropriate for me to say that you were downright shocked that the village flag was up at full staff? When we spoke? I was surprised. About so you assured me on the phone that it was not. And my response basically was, I'll hold while you check, because I've got time stamped photos stating otherwise. And before you think I'm some nut that drives around town taking pictures of flags, I only did it because I anticipated the answers that I would get. You went and you came back and you said, the flag is up. You can't believe the flag is up. You saw the guy putting the flag out and passed it earlier in the morning, correct? That was outside Village Hall, not the library. No, yes. I believe, and I believe there might be uh, someone better's response this time, but my understanding was we did have, we do this dozens of Ralph, times. Ralph, we can't, they can't hear you. They can't hear you. They're going to have to come to Zoom. I have to repeat that. First of all, thank you for your passion, and I respect it that your son is a Marine, and thank you for his service. We put the flags up and down dozens of times. Is your mic on? Yeah. Yes, it's on. We put the flags up and down dozens of times a year. I respect when we are asked to by the governor's office, and, um, and I can't say that we don't miss, we miss this one, and I can't explain why. Uh, I don't do it myself. Uh, we did have a person on vacation that probably usually takes care of that flag and maybe the communication made it through. I sincerely apologize, but uh, if you if you drive around when we, when we do get those orders, we don't do every flag in the community. That's not, but we do try to do the library, we go to all, and like another couple spots around town, key locations. But uh, we missed that one. Or, with, or there was some confusion. I think we had. I think the flags were half staff for another cause, and they were going up that afternoon. Well, let's just be clear: the flags never were at half staff, and it's not just me that saw it. Those all one was because I saw the guys raising. Not, not Friday, not Saturday, not Sunday, not Monday, not when I called and spoke to you at twelve thirty, and even said the Weather Channel app says sundown is at seven twenty nine. So. Do you also recall telling me that you were going to figure out what happened and get back to me? I did look into it. I tried to figure out. I did ask, when we get the, how do we get the request? And when we get the request, what do we do with it? So when the request comes from New York State, because we're, we're part of a chain of emails, we get 20 New York City emails, and then it's delivered to the department heads, and the department heads assign resources to take down the flags that are their responsibility. Well, not to interrupt you, but this is what you told me on the phone. So you weren't going to find out that information. You already gave me that information. You told me you were going to find out why the flags didn't go down and you'd get back to me. And my last words were, you were, I'll wait for your call. I haven't heard a word from anyone. And as I stated earlier, 
I don't expect any of you to go around lowering the flags. We have a village, the village runs, it's supposed to run appropriately. But you all did find out fairly early on, because I was made aware that the board knew. And again, not one party versus another, but there were several people who are listed in leadership for these parties who actively engaged in my Facebook posts. So you all knew. No one, and I asked, I was like, well, is anyone going to reach out? And I was told, well, you know, they don't have to do that. No, you don't have to do that. But is that what we're doing now, the bare minimum, and we only do what we need to do? This is, this is not, listen, I know people go on vacation. I get it. A friend of mine, unbeknownst to me, who's kind of active in Floral Park government, called and spoke with our clerk, who got a whole, uh, you know, statement of how patriotic she was, and she had family who had served and everything else, and then went into saying that the flags were up, and when my friend pushed back, the phrase was changed to the bulk of the flags. So, like I said in my letter, like, what the hell, we're just lying now? Like, it's the flags, or it's the bulk of the flags, or it's not the flags, or it's some of the flags. At that point, we got, again, people go on vacation. It's the end of the summer. I understand that. But, like I said, you know, do you want to pretend you're talking to one of the parents of these fallen service members and tell them that, well, you know, people in JC go on vacay at the end of the summer, so sorry the flags didn't go down. It is not right. It is not who we are. September 11th came down. The mandate came September 10th, 10th to have those flags down. Flags went down everywhere but the Parks Department. In my opinion, those are the easiest flags to put down because they're lit according to protocol. You don't need to touch them. You can put them up, you can leave them overnight. So when our service members were killed, those park flags could have been down Thursday and not touched again until sundown on Monday. I don't understand, I don't understand why it was done. I know that the ball is dropped. I appreciate the apology now, but it's come to the point where I had to come to the meeting here, scratch a scab that I'm sure none of you want scratched. At what point was that option taken off the table day one? Okay, we screwed up. We screwed up. It happens. It was embarrassing. But at what point do we say, I'm going to fix it? Who decided to put out that I can only call a ridiculous statement in the Garden City News, which then was forwarded in the mayor's corner, and that would call them. And in that, in my opinion, that's when it becomes a board issue. You passed along information that was false. It said that you complied with the protocol. First of all, the dates are wrong on it. Mrs. Elardi, I sure. respect. I respect your position. I respect service men. People in my family have served. And what I'd like to say is I contacted Ralph Swanson and Count Norman immediately to find out what the protocol is for the village. I'm in the mayor, I'm the trustee, right? I didn't know what was happening at the time. I'm not on Facebook, right? I learned this from other people, right? So I called up Ralph, Ralph told me what was going on, I said, please take care of me. With all due respect, I'm going to say, you're on Facebook enough where you can be tagged. I'm on Facebook. All of you. I'm not tagged. No. Sorry. Not all of us are. No. No. Not all of us are. No. Excuse me. Not all of us are. Not permitted. I don't think Excuse me. Party, the parties have social media managers who manage social media accounts. Please just don't don't let this be a, a hair-splitting exercise in I did not. political issue for us. Right? This is an issue of protocol, correct? It's an issue of protocol. We have to follow certain protocol. They tell me that they follow the state protocol. If they missed it, we apologize that we missed it. Right? I don't think it's going to happen again. Well, unless, unless would, somebody else is on vacation, and you I'm would, not aware of it. You would think, first of all, I would hope not, you would think it wouldn't be missed, but when I called and spoke with Mr. Swazi, he rattled off the list of all the flags Garden City is responsible for. Okay. And September 11th came around, all the park flags were up. So you think you'd be on your A game September 11th, especially after like it all hit the fan with this thing. So you know this is this is where the upset and the frustration comes from. But let me just let me just say, 
the flags were not taken down on Friday. They were not. And in your, the last sentence says the village complied with the governor's orders. You didn't. So that statement is not true. And I'm not going to come here and smile and nod to a statement that's not true. Ms. Malari? Yes. I, I just, I think all of us, all of us feel your outrage. Not all of us knew from Facebook. We don't have managers. But we did learn from other people that we did it. And I don't want to split hair. So I, I, I don't want to. Okay. So I just want to. Say that not all of us learn our information from Facebook. I however, understand that. However, all of us are concerned that it wasn't drummed down. You heard the mayor say it's not going to happen again. You heard an apology tonight, which is the least we can do. I don't believe it's going to happen again going forward. I believe we will clarify the lines of communication with Mr. Swazi and all the department heads of how to comply. Honestly, that's the best we can do at this point, although that may not be enough to mitigate the damage or the feeling that you had prior, it is the best we can do is to pick up the pieces and move forward. Well, that's part of the best that you can do. But again, the statement, the official statement that was put out is untrue to even the point where the dates are incorrect in it. Does anyone even proofread that stuff? The mandate wasn't through October 31st for the state trooper who passed. The mandate was through sundown on the 30th the day of his funeral. That's not what's in the article either. So there, there are a couple different things going on, and I'm sure you don't want to hear about it anymore, but I've never spoken at a meeting before. No, it's, it's fine and to speak. It's fine to point out these things. It's not just, just one listening. issue. It's not just one issue. So my question is, we've never had to post a flag mandate on the village website. We've never had to post why we lowered flags on the village social media account. Why did the village just feel the need two days after the mandate expired to post something that isn't true? Who's in charge of that? Anyone? It's going to be me now. I will take care of it. Again, I think it's clear that you have very valid concerns. Every single one of us is taking notes here right now, so that it never, never has anyone like putting you in a position of coming here again. We can only apologize. I'm sure none of us want that. <laughs> Believe me, this is not how any of us want to be represented. Well, this was a mistake. Yes, it was. An apology has been offered to you personally as a mother of a Marine. I'm the daughter of a Marine. You have to do understand, though. And, it, it does sound like lip service at this point. The only thing we can do is do our best going forward and try not to have it happen again. And I'm sure the mayor, Mr. Swazi, and all of us are going to have a conversation about that. Yeah. Well, if anyone does want to reach out to me at this point, I am certainly welcome, welcoming anyone to do so. It would have been nice if someone had reached out while this was all brewing. I know you don't have to. It would have been nice. And I would like to think that we don't just do what we have to do. And as far as us following the government, the governor's mandate, I called the governor's office and I couldn't find the mandate for the fallen soldiers. And the press release office director told me they didn't release one because the White House did. And she didn't understand why I was asking. I can, I can forward that to you. I have it from the governor's office. Well, that's yeah. fine, yeah. but what her point was, the White House has already put the flag mandate out. That supersedes anything else. Yeah. So if we it. don't do that, we might want to rethink that. Agreed. So, yeah, I just want to say, Marie, um, moved by your letter, can't disagree with any, you know, I'm sorry that this happened. We have not, while I did not call you, you're always welcome, you know, it's not a partisan thing, we're Hearns trustees, you're welcome to reach out to any of us at any time, and we have been, I have spoken with um, two of the trustees about working on communication, um, and that's something we had spoken about before, but this just highlights the importance of um, collaborating, and you know, Tom, Colleen, and I are going to be meeting on this issue because it falls within the communication issue that we need to work on. I also spoke with Karen Altman, um, 
and we, you know, trying to figure out how this could have happened and what procedure we can put in place so it doesn't ever happen again. The other thing, as far as our protocols with different flags, you mentioned the parks, and um, you know, I'd be happy if you want to be part of the conversation as we go forward. The the parks are not included. Maybe that's something we want to rethink. There are. I have the list of the flags. I only that are, included it because it was included when I called that Monday. Okay, I'm just so. Yeah, what I got. I'm just telling you what I got. I will be looking into it. We are really sorry this happened, yeah. and it's not that you're not calling you doesn't mean we haven't been looking into it and figuring out what we can do to be better. And I'd be happy to talk to you more about it. That's fine. Like I said, yeah. I welcome the communication, but it is a little discouraging to hear. All of this has been going on, and not, no one really felt necessary or even courteous to just reach out before tonight. So, you know, I have to say that. That's how I genuinely feel. And I expect it better. I'm trying to do better this morning. Thank you very much. Any other comments from the people assembled here? Can we go to Zoom? Any comments from people on Zoom? On non agenda items? Nothing? Is this is Steve O'Hardy's engineering? Yes, please. Yeah, I'd just like to have any uh, information, maybe from Paul Way, on how the pool season went with membership. Uh, good evening, Mr. Olardi. We had a very successful season at the pool. Um, if you recall, at budget time, we weren't sure what we were going to be able to do in terms of capacities and uh, availability of the facility. So we projected uh, rather modest revenues for the pool. I believe our membership revenues were projected at about $630,000. I'm happy to say that once they removed the 50% uh, restrictions on capacity, we sold memberships of about $929,000. So we readily beat our estimates for this year. We did much better than we did last year, and we almost met our 2019 numbers. So overall, all the memberships were uh, up substantially from last year. It was a very successful season financially at the pool. Thank you. Any other comments? And one. Just one other question. Could we get an update on the uh, 555 Stewart project? Giuseppe, can you respond to that? Uh, yes, the uh, 555 project. They're actually um, pouring the foundation walls and they're working on the underground piping, the, uh, the, the plumbing pipes right now, as of now. So uh, that's the latest on that uh, 555. So it's still on schedule to uh, be finished in the 18 month time frame? Weather permitting. Okay, thank you. Well, any other comments? Residents on Zoom? Okay, no other comments? Seeing none, I ask for a motion to close the meeting. I believe we adjourn. Before we close, can I just make one comment? Sure. On the anniversary of uh, the 20 year anniversary of 9-11, uh, you know, we lost many people in town, one of our former fire chiefs and uh, many first responders and the people in the towers in Pennsylvania and Washington, they got lost their souls. But there's one, you know, there's many heroes um, as first responders and I noticed one in the audience tonight and I just uh, wanted to point out that this individual worked for the New York Police Department. He went into the towers. Fortunately, he, he survived everything, but I'm sure it was a very emotional day for him. But I'd like to recognize the heroism of uh, former trustee hire, current volunteer fireman. If you could please stand up. Service. We're very proud of you and all you, all you did to save lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to get to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there's, 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 there's no more comments. I ask for a motion to close the meeting. I think uh, Trustee Delaney and I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.